Hello guys, have you ever had this situation in your database? So pivot table with duplicate records. So repeating values just because some developer, which may be yourself, forgot to validate the data on the back end. And then you have product ID one with category two repeated twice because someone launched product categories attached to twice. And of course the consequences are something like that. In the table of list of products, here I am in my filament project, we have Lego repeated twice as a category. And vice versa, if you go to categories and you have list of products per category, some product may be listed twice or multiple times. Of course, the reason is failed validation on Laravel level. But in this video, I want to show you the solution on the database level, how to avoid this to happen in the first place. And this lesson comes from my newly updated course on Laravel daily, structuring databases in Laravel. So over the years of working with Laravel, number one performance slowness of performance reason in Laravel is usually database. And not just queries, it's also the structure. So I decided to update and refresh my old course from 2021. So three and a half years ago, I created structuring databases. Now it is refreshed to Laravel 11 in text format with many more practical examples. So you can see 18 lessons here and I will link the full course in the description below. But as usual, whenever I launch a course, I publish some of that course on YouTube. So today I will talk about the topic of duplicating records in pivot tables and there will be one more lesson from this course tomorrow on YouTube. And the full course is available for premium members of Laravel Daily. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now, back to our topic. So how does this thing even happen? A practical typical scenario is this. So we have database table for pivot table category ID and product ID without any restrictions on the database level. And then we have import of the data, for example, from CSV. So here I am in my controller. For simplicity, I've put the CSV already in array of PHP because this lesson is not about CSV directly. So the structure is this. We have for each of CSV records, then we create the product by name or find it in the database. So first or create is used, eloquent operation. And then we find the category ID by category name like Lego clothes or books from collection to avoid database query for each category. So we have collection once and then we search through that collection and find category ID and attach it. And this is where that thing happens of duplicating the categories. There is no validation here. There is kind of a validation here first or create whether that product exists, but there's no check here. Then that importing controller calculates the processed records or failed records and logs the errors and shows on the screen how many processed or failed records happened. So if we launch that script, I refresh and we have five processed records and zero failed. So there was no exception here for any of those records, although we do have already those five records in the database. So now if I refresh this table again, we have 10 records. And then in the admin panel, it's even worse. See this repeating thing, this repeating thing, and these repeating categories. So it's not just about duplicating twice, it's duplicating multiple times if you're not careful with the validation on this level. The solution. First, let's quickly discuss the Laravel level solution and then we'll get to the database level. So instead of attach, there are more methods for pivot tables. One of them is sync. So it would sync the array of categories to update all the categories for products, but that's not exactly what we want to do here because it would delete the other categories as well, which is not what we want to do. So there's another method sync without detaching like this. And now if we relaunch that script again, processed five failed zero. So again, there were no exceptions, but in the database we refresh and there are no new records. So it's syncing the categories without adding more new records. So that's one way how you can deal with that on the Laravel level. And of course you may add more validation like if statements here above and not even launch that category sync at all. But again, going back to the original topic, we're trying to prevent the validation failure from any Laravel developer yourself or other developer in the future. How do we restrict that on the database level? The solution is here in the migration. In addition to a typical pivot table with two columns, you would add a rule of unique 
key. So you can do table, unique, category ID and product ID, which would ensure that the combination of those two is unique in all that table. So what happens now? If we receive the full database, I do migrate fresh seed, which recedes the categories. And now the database has three categories, but no products. Now let's also roll back to attach like it used to be before with an error, with no validation. And let's trigger the validation on the database level. So if I relaunch that import script, I refresh, I will zoom that in. We have four processed and one failed. So exception did happen. Catch exception led to results failed incremented and in Laravel log we have this failed to import this name with SQL error integrity constraint violation duplicate entry 2 one category two product id one. So you created a unique key with automatic name like this one table name, field name, another field name unique. And it also shows the SQL query what was actually launching. So now what happens? The script still succeeds. It doesn't fail. For any exception of duplicated records, it will log to the Laravel log or you can send a notification to someone or send an email or something like that. And then as a result, you will have how many records fail. Another alternative syntax to this is not unique, but also you can do primary here primary key on both columns. So instead of having ID as an incremental primary key, which is not typical in pivot tables, you can have this, which would also act the same way as unique key. In this case of pivot table, there's no much difference between primary and unique, but generally unique is a bit different. So it may contain null values, for example, and primary key columns, even if it's multiple columns, none of those columns may have null values, for example. But it's kind of an edge case difference. In this case, I would probably go for unique because that's exactly what we want to do here. Ensure the uniqueness of that combination. I like to think of those database constraints as kind of the last point of validation. So whatever happens on the Laravel level, database will still not allow bad data to go through. Another example of such uniqueness comes from default Laravel. So if we open the users table of Laravel default, we have table string email unique. So if I try to, for example, launch user factory create with existing email, I would get SQL error duplicate entry with the same email. And this is the validation on SQL level because I'm launching that in Tinkerwell without any validation. But ideally, you should have both the database level and also Laravel level. For example, in Laravel Breeze registration controller, among validation rules, you may find unique user model. The purpose of this validation is to have human friendly error from Laravel, like email is already taken. And the purpose of that validation is throwing SQL exception wherever that SQL query comes from. So yeah, my advice is to have both and put the strict rules on database level if you have those like unique, like foreign keys, constrained, cascade delete or stuff like that, because maybe in the future, the application will be changed to not use Laravel at all. Or maybe there will be some kind of API created not on Laravel, in addition to Laravel to work with your database. In that case, database will still have all the rules for correct data. So yeah, it was one of the lessons based on my course about structuring Laravel 11 databases about primary keys and unique indexes here, but there are many more lessons and I will link the full course in the description below. And tomorrow I'll have one more free video from that course for you on YouTube. So subscribe to the channel if you want to get that one. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.